Okay, good morning. It's Saturday, August 15th, and we're at the Bucky's. The Bucky's. And we've got coffee and breakfast of champions for yours truly. Donut sticks. Excellent. And we're going to head up to, guess what? Dennis and Dam. Let's see what we can do with some shad. All right, we're over here. And what's nice about what we notice is they got these big LED lights and they're not generating. I think they don't start generating until later this uh, afternoon. So I'm gonna go check it out here and see if we might get something. We've put out the lines. We've actually gone, been here about maybe an hour, actually about maybe 30 minutes and got uh, tried fishing on top. Now we're fishing bottom and no generation. You can see that the water level is really low so we'll see how it goes okay so here's a view of yours truly getting ready to cast this is the jig and float rig but this time forget the jig and put a shad on instead so we've got the cast out and we'll just use our handy dandy rod holder and we'll just kind of check things out Okay, so we shifted to fishing on the bottom and actually started getting some hits. So we're going to stick with the bottom. It is getting kind of hot right now, but we're going to gut it out here at least till noon. Okay, here's another angle of the rod holder that we're using. This is nice because you can prop it into the dirt or the, the bank as well as use rocks to hold it up and it keeps your see these long surf casting rods out of the mud. So we brought the go fish cam, deployed it, and we're getting hopes of getting some big huge fish in the camera. Well, it turns out we got some sunfish and bluegill and more sunfish and bluegill. You can see that they do like that shad, but it's kind of funny that we drove all this way hoping for some underwater shots and we could have got these same shots over there at our local pond. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, we did leave the go fish cam as long as we could in the water made some adjustments so you can see that it has a better angle view now of the fish with these floats that we were using but yours truly decided to brave it and try fishing this without the float and in short order soon discover that once it hits bottom you need to be real careful or you're gonna snag something and in this case I ended up snagging into some braided line a lot of braided line I almost thought I was gonna have to use that two-year loss prevention policy where I could get a replacement for free over the course of the next two years for whatever reason if I lose it but kinda just got this not too long ago so I was going to do everything I could to recover this go fish cam you can see it's stuck it, the hooks not actually stuck on the ground it's it's the braided line that's along the shore you can see some of it right here where it's wrapped around the camera itself and I'm using some, some pretty strong braided line itself to, to hold the camera in place and not lose it. But in this case, it's just way too much. Couldn't get it off. Uh, took a dive in the water uh, just, to re just to figure out where it is. Uh, once I did figure it out, I was able to come back in and uh, bring a, a multi-tool and get it cut away. So here I am using the serrated portion of that cutting tool to break it free. You can hear the chopping cutting sounds and then you can finally see it start breaking away. Oh yeah, there's myself uh, heading back to shore. Almost there. You can see the multi-tool. And you can also see yours truly giving you a good sign that everything's okay. <laughs> Alrighty. Fun stuff.
All right, uh, almost lost the water wolf. <laughs> Luckily, yours truly dove in and got it, so able to save it. All right, it's a good thing found this thing way back. Little Cabela's multi tool had a little serrated edge that helped me cut away that uh, goldfish camera from some of these braided lines that's underwater. Amazing how much junk is down there. All right, got it back though. All right, well, it looks like we struck out this round. Had a few bites, but looks like the uh, gates are going to come open, so I'm going to have to call it quits here. All right, it's coming. Maybe the bite will start. I guess we may stick around for maybe uh, a little bit. Let's see what happens. Water's coming. <laughs> you can also see the little back channel that's coming around where you can see some of the discoloration going this way. So you're going to have a eddy right around here along this section here and hopefully we might catch something. All right, there it is. We're going to generate some water and generate some current. Just to get an idea of where we're starting from, here's this rock. So we'll see where that ends up. So it's a pretty strong smell and it's slowly edging up. This is where we were set up earlier so it's underwater now and there's that rock again. And when they're going with uh, one generator they'll usually stop about right around here. If they go with two it's probably going to go well past that so let's see how it goes. That rock so water is almost up to it. We'll just see where it takes us. Looks like things cleared up a little bit. We got a little float over here in this little eddy see where it ended up just short of the rock all right let's see yeah just short of the rock we were over here is where we were that's underwater now and this is the rock all right we're gonna wrap things up here bring in the one rod we still have out uh, one good thing is is when the water was low I was able to pick up a couple of lures that were stuck on the ground here it looks like a little pencil popper a weighted one rattling really nicely and then it looks like maybe some kind of shad wrap so all right it's not uh not that bad we got a couple more lures so i mentioned we were going to wrap things up well just a minute you gotta stick around for a cast or two one maybe two maybe three did i uh, get a bite and here yours truly is going to be bringing them in here shortly Yeah, <laughs> ended up getting a gar. All right, cool beans. Not bad. Maybe just short of three feet. We'll just push them over. Oh, there we go. All right. Okay, well, we were going to call it quits, but, uh, oh, they're biting. So I had to stick around a little bit longer. There's that rock. You can see it's almost submerged got about maybe a foot or two foot and a half maybe above water rock is almost uh covered it's about maybe a foot now so but things are slowed down a little bit you got a nice steady flow and been getting some steady bites but haven't hooked up other than that one gar so we're gonna have a little bit of water and then we're gonna call it quits so again said gonna call it quits but oh we gotta wait for at least this one this one's fighting really nicely. Actually, been fighting it for about a couple of minutes before I turned on the camera. And unfortunately, this one's going to get away. But from a guess of what we saw as it was coming in and start making that second run on us, this was either a nice size gar or a nice size striper. Bummer. All right, well. We started uh, at first light. It's now about 2.45 in the afternoon. We fished before generation. We fished during generation. And, well, we're going to leave now because we lost a big one. And uh, gutted out for a few more bites and uh, weren't able to hook up anymore. So I think it's time to head home to the casa and maybe do some chilling and grilling and maybe have a beer or two. What do you say? All right, next time we'll catch you all. Good luck and good fishing.